invasion of Saipan started on June 15, 1944 and the Marines fought for two whole days. They had established a foothold on the beaches of Saipan. But the Marines could not take it easy because the Japanese had received orders to push them back into the sea, any means necessary, and they would not accept surrender. So the 9th Tank Regiment gathered 37 tanks to attack the American positions. The Americans already fought off several bonsai attacks the night before, but the worst was yet to come. So at midnight the Japanese drove their tanks and infantry right through enemy positions, causing chaos and confusion, but they also made their tanks easier targets for the marines in their foxholes. The marines also had some anti-tank backup and even some Sherman tanks. But the tank crews found it hard to direct their fire against tanks they could not see. And there was also fear that they would hit their own soldiers in this chaos. And so the marines would have to start knocking the Japanese tanks out by themselves. And they did that with 50 gals, bazookas and throwing grenades onto the tanks or climbing onto them and throwing grenades into the engines and turret hatches. And this fight turned out to be the largest tank bonsai charge in the Pacific. And the Japanese lost almost all of their tanks in one night. And so the battle for Saipan would last for 3 weeks and 3 days and would cost the Americans almost 40,000 casualties. The Japanese would lose 29,000 men and over 7,000 Saipan civilians terrified by Japanese propaganda that warned them they would be killed by US troops committed suicide. All these high numbers will all come in account in the last few months of the war. After the Type 95 Hargo tank, the Type 97 GA was the second most produced Japanese tank of the war and was used on every front that Japanese fought on. The tank performed well in the first few years after it went into production and was pretty advanced for its time. Now it's of course known as a bad tank because it was largely used well after it was obsolete, being outmatched by Shermans they were not designed to fight against. In 1935 the development of the GA started after the Type 89 proved to be too slow and not effective in new tactical requirements the army needed out of a tank. Even though the IGO did horrible in Manchuria, they were still used until 1942. Mitsubishi finished a prototype in June 1937 and was just a scaled up version of the Argo tank. The army was also interested in the Type 97 Chinook prototype produced by Osaka Army Arsenal. It had the same 75mm gun, was lighter and less expensive. But with the outbreak of Second Chino-Japanese War, in 1937 the production of Mitsubishi Chiha tank was greenlit. The Chiha did pretty well in China but in 1939 the shortcomings of the Type 97 came clear after the Japanese 6th Army got their asses handed to them in the Battle of Kalkinko. This led to the development of the Type 1 74mm tank gun and the Shinhoto version. This version had a bigger turret and improved hull to fit the new gun. Mitsubishi also developed the Type 97 GA. The GA was an up-armored version of the GHA, but because of steel shortage, production was halted and only 170 were built. The GA never saw any action and were all kept on the mainland waiting for an invasion. Because the GA was widely produced, it was used for several variants, like the whole knee tank destroyed here and the whole row self propelled gun. The Horo was fitted with a 50cm howitzer and was based on the German grill. The Horo was built after the Japanese bought schematics of this vehicle from Germany. The two Chiha tanks we're looking at today are the ones at Yasukun. Over to museum in Tokyo close to the controversial Yasukuni shrine and the Chiha at Wakashishi shrine and tank school close to Mount Fuji. Both came from Saipan and were all salvaged from a channel by veterans and donated to the Wakashishi Shrine and the Yasukun Museum. The Yasukun tank was confirmed to have fought with the 9th tank regiment at Saipan, but considering both tanks have identical battle damage, both concentrated on the left side of the tank, so there is a chance they both could have served with the 9th tank regiment. And maybe have been knocked out at the Great Bonsai Charge. Of course this is just speculation. They also could have been used for target practice by board GIs. Later both the tanks were dumped in the channel and recovered from the water in the 1970s. Both tanks were left outside and the one at Jessica World War II Museum was restored and placed inside the museum. 
The Tia at Wakakashi Shrine is in a terrible condition and the shrine is still maintained by the veterans and teachers from the tank school that used to be here. The preservation of the shrine is paid through donations and they don't have the money to restore the tank. As you can see both have the same battle damage, concentrated on one side. Only the Yazakan tank has a large hole on the left side and a bound shot on the front of the driver's side. This could have killed the driver and of course the big entry point on the left probably knocked this tank out. The tank at Wakashishi doesn't really have big entry holes but has small impacts all over the tank. But when this tank was recovered the remains of the crew were found inside so it was definitely knocked out in battle. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see close up details of the tanks just keep watching. I hope these shots help any skill modelers that have been looking for detailed shots of these tanks. Enjoy and I'll see you in my next video.
De tank uit Wakka Sisi. De tank uit Wakka Sisi. Wakka, wakka Sisi. Wakka Sisi. Wakka Sisi. Wakka Sisi. Wakka Sisi.